Plunge issue 5, Joe Hill writing with Stuart Eminem on the art. Uh, this is the penultimate issue and kind of sets the, the stage for the, the for the finale, which is which is cool. Um, um, this, this issue moved a little bit quicker than I was expecting it to with sure. some of the stuff that happened, but that it's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, they, they yeah. basically uh, find out a bunch of stuff. Uh, the company guy, Lacombe, finally sort of does his big dick move. <laughs> as it were yeah he has his paul riser moment yep yeah where yeah. he locks them all in and basically oh. surrenders to the the alien parasites and ultimately the, the book ends with like okay you're going to open that hatch in that submarine so we can get to our thing and finally leave mm-hmm. uh although we find out in this issue that there's an egg in there and it's going to hatch and i'm like okay they keep saying they're going to leave but does this monster yeah, thing that's going to hatch from inside the summary is that going to like destroy the planet first and their way yeah. out? Is my that, guess. That's how I took it. Like they're, they're uh, like so. It's revealed because, um, they they get back to the ship mm-hmm. and the, the the captain is is prepared to torture one of the members of the Durlith, the zombie guys, and and the worms are like, yeah, we're we're immune to all kinds of torture. We're not going to tell you what you need. And the one brother that was given the headset is like, well, I have a psychic headset, so, you know, I can go and look into you. And the worm warns that he won't survive that. And he kind of has this never tell me the odds moment. So he goes into their, you know, hive mind, if you will, to their memories. And we see that they're not, they're not just worms. They're, they're reproductive cells and that they're, basically the sperm trying to get to the egg and once they do that that's kind of it yeah um, something i just want to mention here well two things one is that he actually dies from this seemingly uh he, yeah, he, he doesn't wake back up uh and they actually do a really good job of making you care about him a little bit because just before he's doing this uh the, the diver the woman uh mm-hmm. comes over and you know like if you die doing this i'll, I'll kill you you hear me and he says something like oh well you know there's a theory that if you know if there's at least one beautiful woman at your funeral crying, then you've lived a, a decent life. A good life. And she kisses him on the cheek and says that theory sucks. But it's just that it's a nice little exchange. It's kind of sweet. That just gives it enough where you're like, okay, okay, I'm kind of rooting for him not to die now. And then he does, and it's kind of really sad. Yeah. Now, was was her and the native guy were they an item before? Uh, no, I don't think so. Cause, cause there's there's a bit of stuff in there between them. Um, between between her and and him, right right before he has his moment. I never um, I never got the impression. Uh... I didn't either. So that, that that's one one problem I have with this, but it doesn't impact the rest of the story, you know. Um, but basically, the captain takes apart that that worm body, and um, you know they they take in the worms out, uh, and and the Paul Riser guy locks them in. Right, and then infects one of the other members of the crew before yeah. because he's because there's a, he's been told there's a guy by... there's a guy that's coming down who might be able to get them out, uh, right. and they're yelling at him, no, don't trust, don't trust this dude, and the riser guy who has one of the worms in the or one of the parasites in the in a jar smashes it on this guy's head, which infects him. So then he's a drone him. for the rest of the issue. Yep, and then he lets the crew of the Durlith in. Who lets them out? But you see that they've they've put the brother on on the table, and that that zombie body is gone. Like they've they've disassembled it, um, and then it takes them to this you know sacrificial site where where the natives who had kind of worshipped these creatures, you know, it, it offered them up as um, sacrifices, and it, they they tie them all up to these these totem pole looking devices and tell you know the diver you're gonna go down there and you only have until the tide rises so so don't mess this up and yeah yeah weird. everyone's going to die if you don't come back in time right. uh and then but they're all like where well, we ain't getting out of this anyways hypothermia's gonna kill us before the water does you know um yeah so but... before before we get to the ending though i don't want to mention that the the riser character uh, Lacombe, he mm-hmm. He wants the the thing, you know, the object. Ingot. Yeah, the ingot, because yeah. he 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 saw it through the X ray and he said it was like seeing the face of God. And yep. he's basically like, I don't even care if they kill me before this is all done, as long as I get to hold it for a while <laughs> before I die. Oh. He's more than happy with that that outcome. Yep. 
Uh, and out. One of my favorite panels in the book is actually when it when you turn the page and they're they're on their way to this place uh, where all the totem mm-hmm. poles are. And there's a, there's a wide panel at the top of just his face as he's sort of looking down at the thing, and he looks so sinister. Yep. Uh, I just yep. think it's a really uh, really good piece of art. Uh, there. No, it is. It's uh, it's very creepy. Um. But, but speaking but yeah. of but speaking of good art, after after the diver like he's like, hey, I'll be back in a, a, sec, a sec, boys. Just kind of yeah. like really nonchalant. Um, right. the art is she's like swimming down to this this submarine. There's a uh-huh. whale that's coming for her, and then the giant, Parker. yeah, the, the the giant parasite that we saw in the water last issue yep. actually comes and like tangles it up to like sort of like protect her because she's going to do something for them. So she's under their protection yep. for now. Yeah, so I didn't get that the orca was going after her, unless it was like the natural world trying to stop her mm. from doing this, which that would have been cool. But don't forget that orcas are the top of the food chain. These are whales that eat great white sharks, right, mm-hmm. for fun. They kill great white sharks for fun, um, eat their liver, and then leave them floating, right? So the, the, the fact that this gigantic worm took one of them out is like, well, what what is going to brew in that womb when they get in there? Yeah, because you know? you'd almost suspect this thing is the sort of thing that might be born, but we already have this thing. So what's right? Yeah, what's in there? Um, it, it's, it's, and it, it, it also plays with with a lot of you know. The more I learn about Stephen King stuff, because I I had stayed away because as a kid I, I would get afraid of that stuff, but you know, talking with Tim about Stephen King and how much. He's kind of been influenced by H.P. Lovecraft and, and the old gods. And that Pennywise is kind of one of the old ones. I, I get the same vibe of these creatures that whatever is going to be born is something akin to like Pennywise or or even the, the creature from the Dollhouse family. Something along those lines, like this celestial terror. Um, and that's not good. <laughs> so. Yeah. Now even even after the the arc a bit like the just the her swimming down and the the page where you see the mm-hmm. sub the the atmosphere here the the rays of light hitting it from above like yep. it's it's really obviously it's a very uh you know it's not a busy page it's a very kind of simple right. atmospheric page but it kind of sells the the quiet darkness and the, the the dread of it and the final page is just the you know the the hatch it's just the you know the the, the lev you know the, the valve and just like hey this is it. Yeah. This, this is opening I, next issue. I haven't been into a hatch this much since probably 2002. Is that when when did when did Lost debut? 2004. So early. <laughs> okay, then 2004. Um, I I haven't been this into it since that. So it's uh it's pretty wild. Now this issue was really good. I had a lot of fun reading it. I I, I definitely feel something's up the sleeve though, with the brother dying because it seemed like it was the end but maybe not right because it wasn't a traditional death no like he, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he somehow woke back up if like maybe mm-hmm. when they if they, if they like disrupt their hive mind or something that will give him the the, the opportunity to right. escape but yeah for now he seems dead because uh. he he brought up that this was you know it's like free diving right is yeah it seems scary from the top like you're gonna die but the more you do it and the more comfortable you get the better you get at it the further you can go and that he goes, and then his, his you know, kind of his final words as himself are, this is what we do, it's not suicide, it's salvage. And I was like, oh man, really, really drove that point home. Yeah, right? and obviously it pisses off Captain Carpenter, who end, ends up just, yep. just basically ripping apart the, the, the other host yeah. that's in there. Um, they are actually as well, because they, they do treat his, like, sort of dive into the the hive mm-hmm. mind as kind of a deep sea dive the art is very interesting it's, it's different enough from the actual dive at the end it doesn't look the exact same but it definitely has kind of a dive quality to it which uh i thought was a yep. really smart choice so mm-hmm. uh no plot has really been really solid um i'm really i've dug the story progression i think it's going to read fantastically in trade it'll make a hell of a movie if like netflix or someone wants to fund it get on it i want to watch this yeah certainly won't complain uh what are you giving Plunge issue five, Matt. I'm giving this one a nine. <laughs> Matt with the big numbers this week. Uh, I'll probably go with 8.5 on this one. Uh, but really good, though.